That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Neil Armstrong's historic first step on the moon on the Apollo. Neil Armstrong's historic first step on the moon on the Apollo 11 mission symbolized years of hard work, preparation, and training by other astronauts as well, including Eugene Cernan. Two months earlier, Cernan had flown on Apollo 10, which paved the way for the lunar landing. Houston, Apollo 10, the Z axis track, and now looks real good and real solid. Cernan and astronaut Tom Stafford descended to an altitude of 47,000 feet above the moon without actually landing. Cernan wanted more. He was offered a chance on Apollo 16, but not as mission commander. At that point, he faced one of the toughest decisions of his life. Cernan decided to say no to the offer. Well, that was my almost biggest mistake when I had a chance to walk on the moon on Apollo 16, and I told my boss, uh, no, thank you, and he couldn't believe it. He thought I was Commander crazy. or nothing, mister, right? That's what I wanted. I wanted to command my own flight, and uh, fortunately, that was the biggest risk I took on Apollo. The biggest risk I ever took was not going to the moon. It was turning down an opportunity to walk on the moon on Apollo 16, because I had no guarantee, Chris, at all of ever going back to the moon. Certainly didn't have a guarantee of being a commander, and certainly had no guarantee of walking on the moon. It was just that I felt that I wanted a responsibility of making something happen. Being response, success or failure. And I mean, if we didn't get back, it was going to be my fault. But if we had a good mission, I was going to be part of it. it was, at that time, it was a gamble worth taking. I mean, in retrospect, I, I'm sure I was crazy at the time. But not crazy after all. Eight months later, Eugene Cernan got his wish to be commander on a mission to the moon aboard Apollo 17. And this was a night launch on Apollo 17, which even made it a little bit more challenging. We'd like to dedicate the first step of Apollo 17 to all those who made it possible. We landed in a valley on the moon that was surrounded by mountains higher than the Grand Canyon is deep. And after the dust cleared and the noise stopped and the vibration quit and all the people quit talking, all of a sudden, I'm looking at this massive valley with the earth out there on top of the mountains that no one had ever seen before. I mean, we were now where man has never been. When I placed my foot on that hard surface of the moon, I realized this is not earth. Uh, you can climb the highest mountain and walk the depths of the deepest ocean and you're still on planet earth. I'm no longer on planet earth. I'm on another body, another planet, another whatever you want to call it, somewhere out in the universe, relatively close to home, but different. I mean, is this really happening? You're living reality, but it's where reality itself is almost like a dream. I mean, you gotta pinch yourself. I'm on, I'm on a moon, a quarter of a million miles away. I'm on another planet, and I'm not dreaming this. I'm, a, I'm a here, I'm alive, I'm well. I was strolling on the moon one day in a merry, merry month of December. Now, May, May. When you go to the moon, you come back with the conclusion that it's too beautiful to have happened by accident. No matter by what name you call your God or by uh, how you dress him or how you worship the God, above, above all religions is a creator of the universe. I know I've witnessed a small part of that creation. Uh, and, and that's not a religious statement, that's a spiritual statement. It's my feelings, it's my, it's, it's what, one of the things I came back with. And it's three-dimensional. I mean, you can see beyond, you can see into that infinite blackness, beyond the edge of the Earth. And the Earth is dynamic, it rotates very majestically yet mysteriously on an axis you can't see. But every chance I got, I had to just take a look and say, you know, I'm, 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 I'm really here. And, I'm, and I wanted to reach out and touch the earth because you can almost, it's three dimensional. Science and technology got me there. But what I was looking, and even more important, what I was feeling could no longer be explained to me by science and technology when you're just that far away looking back at the, at the logic, at the purpose of this planet of ours, our, of, the, of our star in the heavens. You, you come, it's like sitting on God's front porch looking back home. If you can let your imagination wander, that's truly what it's like. Let's see if I can't crash the uh, corner and get that contact. See if I can't get it. How do you separate the wonder and this extraordinary rare experience from the job you have to do? It's, that's tough.
Yep, any help in a long. You had a job to do, and you were your time was your greatest asset because you were there. But it's your greatest enemy because you never had enough of it. Boys, well, you know that's what you call getting down into your work. Cernan and fellow astronaut Harrison Jack Schmidt, the only trained geologist ever to walk on the moon, returned with the largest number of rock and soil samples. Their job, facilitated by the lunar roving vehicle, which traversed the greatest distance ever on the surface of the moon. We had three excursions on the surface of the moon in 75 hours. I think the, one of the most memorable, aside from looking back at the Earth itself, is when we left the moon on Apollo 17. Because Jack Schmidt, my lunar module pilot, was already back in, uh, climbing up the ladder, looked, uh, looked down at that footprint down there, and that was mine. I mean, that was my footprint on the moon. I'm not coming back this way. It wanted to make that moment last forever. Wanted to capture it, wanted to put it in a bottle and bring it home with me. Uh, very memorable, very nostalgic uh, moment. And well, as we, as, as I'm talking, I'm, I'm back there right now. I'm crawling up that ladder. I know what the earth looks like. I know what that footprint looks like. And got back in. And once we got back in and threw out our backpacks, which we couldn't bring back with us, it was over. It was over. Could never get back out again. That was it. All we had to wait now was for that engine to fire and uh, get us get us out of there. Three. Houston. Coming up, the space.